Today's case is a treatise on how to properly serve a notice to withhold and how to collect that $100 a day penalty when they refuse. And yes, it's $100 per day per missed pay period capped at $10,000 per missed pay period. So if the employer doesn't withhold it for five months and the obligor is paid twice a month, that's 10 pay periods or potentially 100 grand in fines payable to the person who is owed child support. I bet that got your attention. But before I break down that process, this message. Hey, thanks again for visiting my channel. If you like the content that I produce, feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. In today's case, dad owes child support. He works for his family. They run a small business. Mom's lawyer serves off a withholding notice via regular mail and certified mail to that family business. The family business refuses to sign for it and no support is garnished. Mom sues the employer. The employer says, you know, haha, you didn't, we didn't sign for it, so you can't get us as the statute requires service via certified mail return receipt or process server. The judge and appellate court disagree and say you knew, you ignored, you owe. The employer is in order to pay mom 66 grand, although that part of the judgment is reversed because there was a minor computational error. So it ends up being a little bit less than that, but it's still pretty significant. Now let's break down how this is all done into maybe easier to follow steps. First, after a uniform order of support is entered, the obligee, that's the person who's owed money, will they serve off a withholding notice. The notice itself must be regular on its face, meaning everything has to be filled out as listed in the withholding statute, especially in the withholding statute, there's a section 20C, which lists 11 criteria from font size to having correct court dates. Any defect to that, let's say leaving out the SSN number, that can be fatal to the request for that $100 a day penalty later on. The manner of service, if you're looking to enforce that penalty, must either be by process server, sheriff, or certified mail with return receipt. However, in today's case, if the employer had constructive notice, that too counts. Specifically, the owners were aware the parties were getting divorced. The notice was also served off to multiple people in the company via regular mail, and the certified mail was returned with the, ref with the words refused written on it. Taken together, that all was enough for the judge and the appellate court to take the position the employer knew and they were simply dodging it and knowingly refusing to withhold garnishment. So let's go over the process here. Under the statute, the employer has 14 days from the day of mailing to withhold the money. Once they start withholding the money, and this part is important, they have seven business days thereafter to remit the money. Now, as we all know, business days exclude holidays and weekends. If that deadline is blown through, however, it doesn't kick in. You still have to serve off a delinquency notice pursuant to, sub, uh, to paragraph 45J of the withholding statute. Now, unlike the notice to withhold that you can download online, the 45J notice is actually something you have to draft from scratch and it has to strictly conform to the statute. The 45J notice, similar to the original notice, has to be uh, served via certified mail return receipt, but, and there's always a but, the payor slash employer, they get 14 days from the day they receive the notice to either withhold or explain why they didn't withhold. If all those dates are blown through, then that $100 per day penalty is triggered retroactive to the first pay period that should have been garnished. I know that's a lot and it's very technical. You know, if you feel lost, let's try it this way. Here's an example of that $100 per day penalty. Let's say the non-custodial parent is paid twice a month on the 1st and 15th of February in this example. You mail off the withholding notice certified mail on the 1st. They have until February 15th to withhold. They then, and this part is very important, they have seven business days thereafter to remit that money to the state disbursement unit. Now the 15th of February is a holiday, it's gonna be President's Day. So you're gonna start that seven day business day count on Tuesday and that's gonna conclude on February the 25th. So let's say at that point, the job has done nothing. So on the 26th of February, you serve off your 45 subparagraph J notice. Now remember, it's the day it's received that counts. So let's say nobody signs for the delinquency notice until the following Monday. From there, they have 14 days to get their acting gear and either remit the money or explain why they can't. And if by that 15th day of March 15th, nothing happens, now let's say on the 16th, they finally get their acting gear. Theoretically at this point, they owe for three pay periods no matter what they do. February 15th, March 1st, and March 15th. And the amount they owe as of March 16th would be $2,900 for that first missed pay period, 
$1,500 for the second missed pay period and $100 for the third missed pay period, or a total of $4,500. Now remember, it's every missed pay period. So every day thereafter under this example up through the end of the month is actually gonna be a $300 per day penalty because you have three missed pay periods. It's really not a bad haul if a job is playing games. Now the case law is very clear. Every I has to be dotted, every T cross. If you mess something up, you don't pass go, you don't collect $100. Anyways, that's all I have. Thanks for watching.